What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. All right, STR Nation, we've got a very special episode today. One of our our good buddies that we've we've stayed in contact with since the good old clubhouse days, which we'll intro here in just a second. But this one we went real deep. We're definitely gonna have him back for a part two, but it was heavily focused on on the hotels and uh shared his journey on how you know he made that leap from the corporate grind to STRs full time and then getting into the hotel game. And just some of the different nuances. And this is somebody that I look at as a, a branding and marketing expert, especially in the hospitality space. I feel like I, I talked to him in Nashville and I was like, dude, your, your marketing skills are very solid. And it's just his branding is really good um, for his properties. And it shows, you know, his direct booking percentage, he said was 80%, which is lights out. So uh, the guy definitely knows what he's doing from that standpoint. Yeah, no, super solid show, lots of notes. And again, even if you're not in the hospitality, like in the hotel space, all the actionable things that you can use to create your portfolio of SDRs anyways. Uh, and then probably one of the most passionate guests that we have had on outside of Mark Simpson. The guy spoke nonstop. Me and Mike were trying to get words in, but he has such a passion to the story that he's, he's saying. And you can tell that he has spent so much time learning what he loves to do and his craft. That it was just such a pleasure to just watch him share all of that knowledge. Uh, and again, I took a ton of notes. I'm going to go back to listen to it because regardless of what the game is, getting off of OTAs, may that be Airbnb or the booking.coms or whatever it is, it is how you're going to keep more money, make more money. And so without further ado, I think we should get into the show. Let's do it. What's going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here as always with my main man and brother from another mother with a man bun, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, E? What's up, brother? Good to see you. Two times in a day, had our boardroom call earlier and uh, getting into some fun stuff, talking hotel due diligence today. Mm -hmm. A little dry subject, but man, it saves you a lot of money. I've made a lot of mistakes with due diligence, so I wanted to share yeah, some. Yeah, necessary. Necessary. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and I think, and I think we, everybody understood, even though it was dry, I saw people taking lots of notes. It's like, yeah. it's where you make your money. Yeah. You 100%. buy right and you, and you know what you're getting yourself into, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited for our guest today. I finally got to meet our boy in person at uh, SCR WealthCon. Today, we've got Mr. Kevin Reardon on the show. What's going on, buddy? What's up? It's great to be on with you guys. And hey, I just got to say, both of you guys, SDR WealthCon, I, I finally got to catch up with you guys there. And man, just kudos to you guys. It was a credible event, uh, a great gathering of people, really, really well run. So so congratulations to both of you. It's a, it's a really wonderful event. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, it was uh, a lot of good energy, man. Like just genuinely oh, yeah. good people. Like everybody I ran into, I was like, man, we got a great, great community there. So incredible community and i mean great information great energy being shared back and forth and then and then just the the sharing of of just networks mashing it was it was it was fire i loved it yeah dude yeah well you you're you're quite the uh hotel savant now but let's let's go back dude how did you get into the hospitality space yeah well you know uh i stumbled into it as as we do but I, I, you know, I really started with real estate, I think as a lot of people, I, I think there's a lot of people listening right now. First of all, you know, I want to, I want to provide a lot of value and, and I hope if you're listening, just write some things down and be really mindful here. Cause I'm going to tell you some of my story and, and then hopefully provide some really good tips, uh, and, and insights that might help you acquire a hotel, market your hotel and be more effective in your operations. So when I got started in this industry, it was 2005. So it was pre great recession. And I got started because my father and I started buying and managing short-term rentals. 
And at that time, as you guys, I'm sure are well aware, in 2005, 2006, you basically could buy anything you wanted with barely any money. It was a completely different world back then, uh, now almost 20 years ago. And so I was 17 at the time, and that's when I really got involved. We started buying these short-term rentals. We had a portfolio of about six townhomes, so a few million dollars of real estate. We had that in... In 2005, 2006, we had put that together. And this is in a vacation rental town, traditional traditional short-term rentals. And this is pre-Airbnb. This is pre-all of that stuff, right? And so what we did is, is, well, what we did by necessity is by 2007, the market had started going down. 2008, the market crashes. Many people declare bankruptcy. I mean, it was a complete slaughter, right? In 2008, 2009. So during that time period this was a side hustle for me and i would operate the short-term rental business during the summer and we became one of the market leaders in our rental operations and that would kick off my now almost 20-year career in real estate and hospitality short-term rentals and then eventually hotels so in 2005 and and thereafter we we got really good at direct booking and marketing so imagine this this is crazy to think about but this is like pre airbnb and so at the time like there's all these crazy everyone's just getting onto the internet everyone's just getting websites up i mean we were the one of the first vacation rental companies at that point to have a website it sounds crazy now like this seems like a, a given but we were one of the first people to do that and one of the first people to to like start taking bookings off of our website outside of people having to call into a price line or booking.com or an Expedia. So, and at that time there was no, there was no, like there's very few direct booking calendars. People were going through these listing sites. So now Airbnb, Expedia, booking.com, you're, you're familiar with paying a commission, which we'll talk about that. That's a huge pain point in our industry, both short-term rentals and hotels. But at that time, you were going on listing sites that were just charging a monthly subscription. So it would be like 50 bucks a month per property, and they would market your property as part of their site. And then later, after the crash, and the round, around the time that Airbnb started coming up, all these sites started getting acquired, and it would over time become what we now know as the booking group and as the Expedia group. And so I've seen that develop over now almost 20 years. And I did short-term rentals as a side hustle. We managed that portfolio for 15 years and saw the market crash and the market rebuild for another 10 years thereafter and managed those rentals. And like I said, this entire time, it, this was a side hustle for me. And I think a lot of people listening, you could probably identify with that. That's probably, uh, I think that's where a lot of people find themselves, where they might have one, two, three Airbnbs. I know we're just out at WealthCon in Nashville. And and I talked to a lot of people that were had started their portfolio. And now they're looking at like, how can they level up? And there are a lot of people looking at hotels, looking at scale and how they can get there. And so I was at the point in 2018, I had become an attorney. I went and worked on Wall Street and I did real estate finance and, and transactions and worked with some of the smartest people, some of the best people in the world. And this was this was a huge thing for me because I didn't grow up around wealth. I don't know if any of us did. And I didn't know wealthy people. I didn't know real estate. I, you know, we did the this short-term rental thing, and that's really all I knew. So I knew I'd had to get the Wall Street. So I did Wall Street for a few years. And then it finally came a pivotal moment in my career where I made this pivot towards, you know what, I'm going to put away this nine month, sorry, nine year season of my life, which was an attorney. It was basically all of my 20s. And I'm going to go back to this short term rental thing. There was, there's something here. Airbnb just became super popular around 2017. And I have an opportunity now to buy hotels and I didn't have a lot of money. So my, my first deal was super creative as I think a lot of people's are, but I just knew I, I was, I didn't want to be in the golden handcuffs, right. Of being an attorney. I made I, years of my life to get where I was six figure salary seemed to have probably the top 1% of whatever you could want to have in life. But I found myself, I still had a big hole in life. And a big hole in me personally, you know, we did billions of dollars of transactions, but like the thing is, is it sounds cool. Then you're actually doing it. Like I did in three years, I helped close over $15 billion in, in transactions for investment banks on wall street. 
all the banks that you can imagine. And the thing is, is after three years, it, it was like, this is soulless. It's a bunch of numbers. It's a bunch of people that are trying to make money. And I didn't feel like my life was well-rounded. And I always loved the side. At this point, I've been doing short-term rentals for almost 15 years. And I was like, that's like where real people are. And that's where I get to like work with people that I like to work with and can build teams and can build and can build an experience for people. When we host people, they're coming for the best times of their lives. And, and I don't take that lightly. And I love being a part of that. And I love, I love, I love being involved in, in, in shaping the lives of thousands of people that visit us every year and, and all the people that work with us. So I had the opportunity to acquire my first motel in 2017 and I took a leap. I left, I left my job. And I think, I know Mike, you went through this, right? And, and so a lot of people, a lot of people find themselves in like, how do I take that step? And that's looking back in, in the last decade for myself, that was a major pivotal moment of, am I, am I willing to take this leap? But eventually you just gotta, you just gotta say, you know, screw it. I'm going all in and you just got to bet on yourself. And that's really freaking scary, you know, especially when we have constraints put on us, when you feel like you're part of a system that, you know, you just, it tells you what to do next. And, and there's what people accept as, as being the norm in how you're supposed to progress through your life. And to say, you know, you know screw that. I, I'm living life on my own terms. I'm building my own business and I'm going to take, I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to take a big risk here. And if I lose it all, I don't really care. I just want to know that I tried and that I did my best. And so that was my attitude in 2017. I purchased my first motel, which when I left, I had blown most of my money on, you know, stupid stuff, a penthouse, you know, going to the club, your suits, all, all the things, right? And so I didn't have that much money. I just saved enough money. I, I saved up enough money just to like pay my living expenses for a while. And I had a motel that was brought to me by a connection in the market where I had been working these short-term rentals for 15 years. And the motel was right off the beach, amazing location, but it was a terrible property. It was full of drugs. There was prostitutes, drug dealers. It was, it was as bad as you could probably imagine a motel being. In fact, the people on that block would tell their kids that they weren't allowed to walk on the side of the street that our property was on because they were afraid that something would happen to them. And so I, the owner was an absentee owner. And, you know, he was making no money. The guy that was managing his property for him was basically stealing it, uh, which is really sad. This guy wasn't in good health and he lived seven hours away. So if you're listening to this and you're like, how do you get into hotels? Well, here's a way that you can do it it's super creatively. And we had Pace Morby was at the conference. So I love, I love chatting with Pace. And, and one of the things that stuck, I was talking to Pace backstage and, and I was telling him, I was like, man, you know, I got into hotels and created all this wealth just because there was one guy who was willing to do seller finance with me and pace just like looks at me and he's like dude why don't you just do every deal seller finance and i was like actually you have a great point you have a great point man and i've been thinking about it ever since and now we're looking at deals where we're like no we can probably get this done seller finance but so i got into motels because my proposition to this first owner was okay you have a property you're not making any money you don't want to operate it you probably want to sell it no one wants to buy it so here's what I'll do. I'll take the property on what's called a lease option agreement. And then I'll have a strike price where if I want to buy the hotel, I will buy it from you. And so I actually negotiated this agreement. So I actually rented the hotel for the first six months because my thesis was Airbnb. No, see, it's crazy to think, but this time in 2017, and no one in our short-term rental market was on Airbnb. All people knew was Verbo, HomeAway at the time. And, and so I was like, you know what? Airbnb is like going to become a really big thing really fast. People are just catching up to it. I'm going to get this hotel. It's a bunch of apartments. You see, it wasn't like a standard hotel. It had everything had kitchens had multiple bedrooms. It was, it was apartments. And so I said, y'all got to come in here and we're going to, we're going to put this on Airbnb because no one else is on there. And this is a cool thing. And we're right off the beach and let's just clean it up. So I negotiated my pitch to this owner was. I'll take the property off your hands. You give it to me on a lease. I'll, it's a triple net lease. So I'll pay all the expenses and I'll write you a check every month. So right now you're not making any money and it's a total pain for you. But what if every month you knew you had a check coming to you and you didn't have to deal with this property. You didn't have to deal with this owner, this manager that was, that was screwing him over. 
And he said, okay. And I said, one other thing, I want to buy this property, but this property, I, you know, there's a lot of issues with it. So let's do this. Let's, let's negotiate the price right now. And at the end of the agreement, we're going to have an agreement for the purchase price. And you want to include something like a right of first refusal. You want to make sure no one else can buy it while you have it in your possession um, on a lease. And so that's what we did. And and my big thing is, and I know you guys are a fan of this too, is, is the lean startup, right? It's like, how do you prove a concept and get something off the ground for as little money and as quickly as possible? And I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I see some, some mistakes I see people getting into the industry or new entrepreneurs in general is you get obsessed with all these like things, all these tasks, right? I got to make my LLC. I got to make a website. I got to do this. I got to do that. You get and, and it's like, it's never ending. And then it's three months, six months, 12 months. And it's like, how much money you have coming in now? And so for me, I was like, okay, I'll take this on a lease. I got to start making lease payments in 30 days. And so I, I get the property. And within the first two weeks, all I did is I had, I didn't have capital. I didn't raise capital. I didn't have the conviction or the belief to go raise other people's money around this. So I had a credit card though, and it had a hundred thousand dollar credit line on it. And so I stretched that hundred thousand credit line to go and to cosmetically renovate and clean out and paint all of these units that I had just taken on a lease. And within, I put it on Airbnb within two weeks of acquiring the property and within two weeks of acquiring the property, the reservation started piling in. And I was like, oh, damn, I'm on to something, right? And so then we start, we get full swing into the summer. And within, let's say three to four months, we had double, doubled the revenue in the property in the first three to four months. And at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm really onto something. And I'm like, cool, I've got this purchase option. Now let me go back to the seller. I, I know that this property is going to be a wild success at this point. And I didn't even know what it's discussed it would end up becoming. But so I went back to the seller. I found him an attorney. I got, had my attorney, had them get together, and we made the sale happen. At that point, I went out and raised a little bit of money so we can put uh, the appropriate renovations in and bring it up to a true boutique lifestyle hotel. And that that is how I got started. And this is now 2018 of acquiring that first motel. That deal, to get to get that deal and do it so creatively and to get my start, I want people to understand, like, it's not necessarily going to happen overnight. It did not happen overnight for me. First of all, I spent 15 years just managing vacation rentals before I even thought about I'm going to do a hotel. And second, it took me over a year and a half to get this hotel and, and to own it. And so the other thing to take away, right, is... How can you be creative? Like what, what are your, what are the advantages? What is it in for you? But, but more, more than that, what is it in for the owner that you might be speaking with in how you might be able to structure something creatively to get your start in hotels? I actually just got a, off a call earlier today with another gentleman who owns a portfolio of seven, seven hotels across the East coast. And I would say, I believe half of them, half of the seven hotels are all on owner financing and one of them has 7 x in value as he's held it for the last eight years. And so there's some really cool stuff to do in this industry. And I know there's a lot of people thinking about getting in or just getting in now. And or you're in it, but you're like you're looking to scale up. And there's so much opportunity out there right now. There's a lot of mom and pops. We talk about them all the time that that can't keep up with the technology that don't understand they'll understand what's going on in in just in in building operations and it's it's complicated there's a lot of moving parts and we'll get into some of the specifics of those in just a minute but but there's a lot here that that people just don't understand but to see the beauty of it is if you're coming from short-term rentals like i did like you did mike you understand one the true essence of hospitality you understand people and you work really hard for those five-star reviews because that's that's the only way that you were able to make it when you started with your short-term rentals. Two, you built your own cloud-based systems when you're doing short-term rentals. Like everyone has that now. Everyone works off of whatever it is, Guesty or whatever the platforms are now for short-term rentals. And, and it's just a given now that you're going to set up a, a pricing system, that you're going to set up uh, using VAs or, or leveraging different mobile platforms and, and 
communicating via text, right? Those are givens. But the thing is, is you get into the hotel hotel industry and people are like 20 years behind and they, they don't necessarily understand the stuff. So understand, understand the value that, that the skills that you have, that you might be able to add to these properties as you're getting into them. Then over the last several years, I would go on to acquire another hotel. Uh, so I, two hotels in my first three years, raised a little bit more capital when I did that. Uh, and we operated them. We just sold one of them. The sale on that generated a multi, multi-million dollar profit to us. And that was that was a big moment in my life in the last several months of of getting that done and and just seeing seeing one complete cycle. That was, you know, five years of holding that property. And and we continue to operate our other hotel. We have a phenomenal I, I've relocated now to Scottsdale, Arizona. My properties are in New Jersey, but we have a phenomenal team, uh, a great general ma manager, Diego and 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 Janet and our whole team. They're like a family and they run that property at such a high level. And I'm so proud of them. And and they really they make they make that run. It's quite incredible to, to see what we've built there. And now. Now that I've gotten to go through the cycle with a couple of hotels, exit a hotel. Now we now we do we work with hotel owners across the country. We started something we call Hotel Accelerator, and uh, and and we actually take all the systems, all of the pain points, all the things that we had to go through, and we help other hotel owners figure out how to be how to create an effective brand, how to effectively renovate their properties, how to build operations, how to leverage digital and social media. Our favorite how to make that happen. And, um, and, and so we love, we, we've got hotels, East coast, West coast, and, and those owners are, are killing it, getting their first hotels or building, building, uh, up on their existing portfolio. So, so that's kind of been, that's, you know, that's a high level of, of the last almost, you know, 18. So almost 20 years of being in this industry and to see it develop and see where it is now. See, this is why I'm so excited is because like, cool guys like like you two right and and everyone that listens to this podcast you know this is this is you could feel this guys i, I know you guys felt this at at str wealth con you could feel the energy of shift of like there's all of these individual hosts and now there's like this community that's emerging of now hoteliers people like really leveling up building your portfolios taking this to a whole new commercial level you can like you can feel it you can see it i've seen it the last couple of years, uh, I felt it. I, I certainly one of the one of the reasons I went to STR was I wanted to, I wanted to gauge what the interest in in what people were doing, and it like like whatever I thought, it blew my mind away. I was like, okay, yeah, there's there's we have a really cool community that is building, and and I'm really excited to see people getting into this industry because it can change your life. It has changed my life, made me a millionaire. It made me, it made me complete. This is the whole reason I left my job, uh, what, six, seven years ago now. The whole reason is because I was not fulfilled. I was not healthy. I did not have good relationships, but you can have it all. Like you, you can, don't let anyone tell you you need to sacrifice. You need to sacrifice your family or your relationships or your health because you're going to quote unquote grind to make money or make it for yourself. What I've learned the last couple of years is that you can have truly everything. It just takes discipline that 99% of people are not willing to do. But if you're one of that 1% that are willing to have the discipline to make it happen, you can have it all. I mean, I have, I have a beautiful girlfriend, soon to be a fiance, Julia, who, who is a, a half of my business that creates these incredible brands and, is, and creates incredible design and architecture for people. But we have an incredible life. And because we build this vision and Mike talked about this at the conference, I thought it was one of my favorite, one of the favorite things I heard at the conference, because it's so spot on. Mike, you talked about, you talked about if you really want something, you, you have to be able to visualize it and not just like, not just like a little, a little bit here and there, like you have to go deep. Like, what can you smell? What can you feel? Where are you? What, what are you, who are you with? What, what are you doing? Like, how does it feel? You have to physically make yourself feel it. And to get to the next level, and, and that's where I've been the last couple of years of self-development, to get to that, if the stronger the vision you have, the more you can, it's, it's the secret, right? There's a book called The Secret, and it's like the power of manifestation and how you can make these things happen for yourself. And it's true, you, like, you can do it. But I think I, even I underestimated what it takes 
to actually make that happen and make that a reality. Because here's the other secret is, or what people don't know about my story is that a few years into owning multiple hotels and now having a large team, 20 employees, I never had that before in my life. One summer, it was such chaos. It was two years ago. It was such chaos that, that I physically was sick. In fact, you know, th there was things that I wanted to do and places I wanted to go and I couldn't do it because I could barely get out of bed and I was physically completely overwhelmed and, and my physical health was so bad. It was hard to breathe. It, I had to, I ended up, you know, in the last few years going and get surgery to, and, and it was just like my whole body was rejecting. It's called cortisol stress. And what I learned is that you can get into this business and be super successful, but let's not joke about the work that it takes to be successful in this business because when you're leveling up and you're and you're saying okay i want one hotel two hotels three hotels five hotels okay you you need a team you need a routine you need systems and if if they're not on point it is going to catch up with you really quickly and you might think that you have some cool automations and things right now but if, if you don't build an effective team and build yourself, then it can get really overwhelming really fast. And I, I, Mike, you talked about it and I was so happy that you shared that because you went some of the, through some of these same things. And I think the key here is in the journey that I've been on in building my businesses, exiting one of my businesses, building our coaching uh, and architecture business is the realization that John Maxwell talks about the irrefutable laws of leadership and, and I love it. And, and one of, one of the things he says is that the organization is capped by the effectiveness of its leader. And it makes so much sense. It's like, if you're a six out of 10 leader, your organization is never going to be better than a six out of 10. I don't care how good you think you are at whatever hospitality you have to have, you have to be multidimensional. And so if you can self-develop and if you can become a leader and a hotel operator at a level nine, then you can have a level nine hotel organization. And, but your hotel's never getting to a level nine if you're a level six. And especially in this industry, it's so, it's so important because you have so many people and so many moving parts in this business. I, I tell hotel people like hotels are not simple businesses. Hotel, it's, it's the risky, one of the riskiest real estate classes for a reason. Because it's really literally like having multiple businesses inside of one business. It's like having a marketing business, a real estate business, an act, you know, a real estate acquisitions business, a real estate holding business. Maybe you're doing capital raising. That's a whole business. Then you have the marketing, you have the operations, you have housekeeping, you have maintenance, you have front desk, you have VAs, you have accounting. Like there's so this the business is so multidimensional that to think that you can just step in and go it alone and not build an effective team and not be a world-class leader to have a world-class operation. You're just kidding yourself. And One of the things that yeah. I admire about you and that was a hell of a story. So hopefully for the listeners that are like, okay, I've been in SCRs. I want to get into hotels. Like there's a path, man. We talk about it all the time. And one of the things that I've noticed about you over the years is, and I said, I told you this in Nashville. I was like, dude, your branding is so freaking good. Like the branding, like when you look at like Shorehouse, it's like, I know I get, I, I can feel the vibe of that property mm -hmm. when I look at any of your socials or website or whatever. And so I know we're, we're actually getting close on time. So yeah. one of the things that I wanted to, to hear from you is, you know, what are, let's just call it like three quick, like marketing or branding tips, because I know one of the yeah. things that I learned getting into this was. It's very different marketing a hotel and oh, yeah. where your leads come from or your guests come from for a hotel than a short-term rental. So what would yeah. be like three oh, yeah. like branding and marketing tips? Yeah. I mean, this is the big difference, right? Coming from short-term rentals and, and going to hotels. So no longer, you can't rely on OTAs or, or you can rely on OTAs, but it's going to, it's guys, 18%. It's so expensive, man. 18% of your top line. Come on. It, that's a lot of money when you're running a multi-million dollar top line that's like significant money so the question is in hotels how do you reduce that how do you minimize that okay and this is what we're really good at and this is why we got a lot of traction and a lot of success mm -hmm. early on and allowed us to scale up 
and allows us to be super effective in working with other owners. So the secret is this. Our approach when we're working on a hotel is to take a holistic approach to the entire operation. See, a lot of mistakes that we see people making when they go into a hotel is they let all the different dimensions of the hotel fall into different buckets. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you when you brand a hotel, because most of the listeners here, they're going to do an independent brand. They're not going to have a franchise. And so, okay, you have to build a brand. What does that mean? That, that doesn't mean just you come up with some cute name or you come up with some cute tagline. It's not going to get you anywhere. What you do is take a holistic approach. So we start from the top and work our way all the way to the bottom. And what is the identity of the property? And then how does that transcend the entire operation? And I mean everything. So when you create a brand identity, the identity needs to be physical. It needs to be in the space. So how do you design the rooms? How are you thoughtful about what the rooms look like, what the lobby, what the common spaces look like? How is that all on brand? Then we talk about translating that identity into the digital space. So how do you capture the essence of what the experience and the space is and put that into the digital ecosystem, your website, your listing sites, your Instagram, your TikTok, whatever it may be. They need to work together and tell the same story. And then third, this gets lost a lot, is your organizational identity. Because the other things don't matter if you're not servicing people in the same way as the experience that you're trying to create. So how do you talk to people? What's the copy like? What's the the phone message like? What's how do you hire people? How do you talk to your employees? Like all of these, all of these things need to work together to create a brand identity. And, and that's what we help people do a lot, right? And you can do it through architecture and design and all of these things, right? So creating a holistic brand identity is number one. If you have that, great. You've got the identity and that's kind of like your offer to the world. Like here's the experience that we have for whatever, whatever kind of experience you've created. Here's the value that we're going to provide, right? The value is the experience. That's where I see people get caught up. It's like, what's the value of your independent brand? Well, it's not, it's not having a commodity. You don't want to just be a hotel room. Mike, you're really good at this because I, I love you did these super experiential rooms in, in one of your properties. And I love that because you're all in. See, a lot of people don't go all in on their brand. They're halfway in. They're one foot in, one foot out. And then it just looks disjointed. So like when you decide what direction you're going to go, you commit to it. And then it transcends everything that you do. So that's one. Number two, now you need to get attention to your brand because you could have the greatest identity and brand, but if no one knows about it, then no one can do business with you. So how do you get attention? So we love to use digital media. And this is how you can drastically reduce your acquisition costs of your guests. Go from paying Expedia 18% to go spending just what your marketing budget is. And then you've opened up a delta of 10% on your bottom line. So it can be enormous. And as a rule of thumb, we personally, like for our hotels, we look to spend, we look to have our marketing budget, which includes all of you know our digital media influencers, all that kind of PR. We spend about 5% of revenue. And from that, we now currently generate 85% direct bookings to our hotel rooms. And so we opened up a large percentage of our bottom line. So how do you effectively get attention from prospective guests online for cheaper than the OTAs. Well, we love to use, of course, organic, right? Taking that brand, brand identity and going onto Instagram or TikTok now and telling a story and creating, making it super easy for guests to envision themselves in your property and how you're going to make them feel. See, some, I think some owners get caught up in just the cool features of their property. Like, oh, we do like, online check-in or I don't know, like we have remote door locks. I mean, those are like cool. And like for us as owners, you know, you get these gadgets and you think like, oh, this is really cool. But what does that mean for the guest? Like the guests, you need to talk to the guests in terms of the value that providing them like, oh, don't stand in line. You don't have to stand in line. And like our guest experience when you show up, yeah, we did the online check-in and everything in advance. So when you show up, our people are not being transactional with you. They're actually helping you. And 
giving you the true essence of what hospitality is. So when you're creating that attention, we love, see, we got super good at doing paid media. And what I mean by that is we run a ton of meta ads. And so here's what we'll do. Here's our formula. We'll make reels. Right now, we love making reels that are like three to 10 seconds. And they need to be super quick, super fast moving. You literally have, we've done a bunch, we've tested a bunch of stuff. You literally have less than a half a second, okay? Like some people are like, you have three seconds to make an apartment. No, you have like half a second now. That first half second is super powerful. You need to have a really powerful, that's your hook and why someone's just gonna like stop on that video, right? You have to stop the scroll. So that first half second of that reel that you're gonna post for your hotel organic, you need to find something. Every property has it. Like what is the hook of that property? For our property, like we have these, we have a super cool pool area that has like tropical plants and then like pink and white umbrellas. It's super, super fun, unique. It looks upscale, but fun and summery and retro. And so like that's our quote unquote hero image or video segment. And so like if I start a video with a, a, a drone shot or a pan or something of that, or we have a couple other things that we like to use too. Like every property's got one or two things, that kind of hero image of your property. Put it in the first half second. Or if you have a dramatic drone shot, maybe you're on the side of a mountain, like that's crazy. Or you're, you know, if you're in the middle of the Caribbean, then like that could be a crazy shot. So you find what that is. That's your hook. That's your video hook. Then put a caption on it. Put, put, speak directly to who you want to attract. So if you are looking to attract someone from, New York City that uh, wants to get away with their significant other and they have a dog, then speak directly to that person and say, be, and say, this is the perfect escape from the city for couples with dogs. Like it sounds super simple, but like when you speak directly to people in the first half second of the video through the copy and the picture, those are the best performing that we've seen. You can try a bunch of these and then you see you optimize for what does the best. So Stop looking at likes. Stop looking at how many followers you're getting. Start looking at how many people are sharing it and how many people are bookmarking it. Because these are people that actually have intention of, oh, this is really cool. I want to share this with someone. I want to tell someone we should go to this property. I want to save this for later when I'm looking for places to go to the property. We found that shares and bookmarks are going to be your best metric. Okay. When you see what does the best, there's what's going to be your paid media. And now you can start targeting people, targeting your audience with paid dollars. But you might spend $1,000 and get $10,000 in bookings, which we've done. Like that's, that's real. You can do that. So what did that cost you? That cost you 10% to acquire that customer. Versus if I made those $10,000, but I booked those people through Expedia, I paid 18%. So I just saved 8% and I got my target customer. So I saved a lot of money. And I got the people that I want to be at the property that I know will enjoy the property. I got them into my property. So that's number two. That's how to get uh, attention. And then number three is just going to be converting, getting people into your property. And so how do you do that? Dude, you just, hotels are different than, hotels are different than short-term rentals because, because people, there, there's a pattern. We talk about a funnel that people go through to booking your property. At first, people are looking for where to go. In the middle of the funnel, people have a destination in mind and now they're comparing options and prices and at the very bottom of the funnel people know where they want to go and now they just want the best price so we've done all the hard work of getting people interested in the property and coming to our website or our booking engine and getting to the point where okay we want to go with mike's property so you just need to optimize the bottom of your funnel and in hotels that means making sure you have a great Google listing because where do people go when they book? They go to Google. And what is Google? Google is not an OTA. Google is what's called a meta search provider. And a meta search provider is literally just an aggregator of other sites that are selling your rooms and putting them into one listing. How's Google make money? They, they sell ads to, the, to everyone that wants to list there. And they rank everyone based on how much ad spend they're spending. So what you need to do is one, need to make sure you're connected to Google, that you're getting good reviews on Google, that you have great pictures on Google. And then two, you need to spend money into meta search on Google so that you are ahead of booking.com Expedia and that you're better priced and that you're offering more than they are. 
So you have the opportunity to one, look at price parity, you can offer better price. And two, you can offer direct book benefits and it'll actually say right there in paid Google, it'll say we offer free early check-in for direct booking or we offer what, whatever it might be that you can offer. You can put that right there or um, a guaranteed, guaranteed room or you can put, there's, there's a million things you can put there, right? So that's where you need to convert to your booking engine. And, and it goes without saying your booking engine, you just want to make sure it's, it's quick, it's easy. There's a lot of good booking engines out there. You have good photography uh, and you get people just comfortable with when they're going to pull out their credit card and spend a couple thousand dollars, whatever it is, they're, they're comfortable, you're vetted and, yeah. and they'll convert. So 100%. You know what's yeah. funny? I knew this was going to happen because I've been trying to get you on the show for a couple of years. It's now been 40 plus minutes. We could go. And we I, have a, I think we the have three of us. That's what I mean. And we haven't touched on a lot of the things. Hours. Exactly. And we haven't touched on a lot of things. And by the time this episode airs, tomorrow, Friday, Mike is having a baby. And so we're a little bit time constrained uh, in terms of like the overall thing. Yeah. And we need to have you back on because we need to have a whole conversation on, on the team, creating yeah. the team, running the team. Because yeah. you and I had a very meaningful conversation in Nashville on something that you learned in terms of having a key team player mm. and what happens when that changes, uh, which we'll keep for another another time. But I want to be mindful of our time. Mike, I'm sure, has a million things to do with Cora coming tomorrow. Oh, okay. um, Congrats, Kevin. Mike. Has really been, excited for you. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure, bro, to have you on. Your love and passion for this industry has always been evident to me, like from back in the clubhouse days. Oh, and just you. the amount of value you deliver to people has been has been incredible. Uh, I have a couple pages full of uh, notes, and I'm gonna I go back and you. listen to it more. Uh, I yeah. appreciate you. you. You guys are like brothers. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. We have we have uh, we have truly we have such a great community, and uh, and I'd love to come back and and con continue offering more. Right? Cause yeah, there, we cause, love that because that's that's what we want. That's at the yeah, end of the day, all 100%. all three of us, all three of us, we just want people to to learn to to mm -hmm. put it take action put it into practice and yeah and to be free right financially free 100%. to have the dreams 100 percent. so the last question we ask everybody which i'm curious about you is what's your number one secret to success with short-term rentals and hotels i guess mm. something i learned and i know you guys have learned and we can't get into a conversation now but we can later is that you don't need to go it alone and there's amazing community. There's amazing, there's amazing communities that you can join. There's amazing coaches. When I started six, seven years ago, it did not, it didn't exist. Part of the reason I got into what I'm doing now and why I was so excited to be with your guys' community at short term rental wealth is, is because I literally went through being physically sick between, you know, the ups and downs of entrepreneurship and I kind of just learned it all. I had to learn all this on my own. There wasn't a lot of resources, honestly, six years ago. And so the number one secret that people can use and put into action right now to get what everything that they want is you don't have to go it alone and then you can find mentors and coaches that are going to help you. And there's several good ones that, that all of us know. And you can reach out to me, reach out to Mike E. And you can actually accelerate yourself so much faster and save yourself so much time and money by working with the right people. And we call it pulling time forward. If you have the resources to do that, you can literally save yourself a year, two, three years of time and pull that forward into the present by working with people that have already been there can save you from doing, from being your own worst enemy. And they can set you on, see, when you make that investment to work with people, not only are you get in the right community and mindset, but but you start to self develop, and and that's what it took me way too long to do. And once you start to do that, it's, it like becomes an addiction. You get better and better and better, and it multiplies and it compounds. So the number one secret is that when you're listening to this and you're like, okay, this is what I you're thinking to yourself when you make that vision we talked about at the beginning, the vision that you want. You can have that vision, but you don't have to go it alone, and you can join some of these awesome communities. And, and work some of the awesome coaches that we have now available to you. So that would be my, my suggestion. Love it. Love it. Well, appreciate you, bro. And uh, we will definitely have you back on the show. We'll dive uh, deeper on all, the, uh, on all the hotel goodness. I'm on a tight timeline today. Otherwise, yeah. we just keep going and make it a two-part. Yeah, man. 
Well, Mike, best of luck to you and, uh, and send us pictures. We can't wait. Yeah, will do. And for all the listeners, appreciate you guys. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.